Another tool that East Coast has added when routing ductwork is, you know, you set your routing preference as you're drawing. So maybe now I want to choose a different routing preference. I want to go to a four inch water gauge. And I go to put in my elbow and it's asking me for what elbow I want to use. And that's because my four inch routing preference probably doesn't have an elbow set up. So let's just go in there real quick and look at it. So I start my style manager. I come down to my HVAC objects, my duct routing preferences, and I choose my four inch water gauge. So it's got to go out and uh, query the uh, runtime catalog. And if there's a lot of parts in there, then this can take a few minutes to get done. And here we can see uh, for rectangular, there is an L there is no elbow selected. So let's choose, um, let's choose our square elbow, four inch pressure class, and I'll just hit OK. So now when I come in here and I go to route an elbow, I get my square elbow right away. So what I suggest is in your routing preference, put the elbow in there that you would use 90% of the time. So if you're routing with square elbows 90% of the time, make sure you put that in your routing preference. And the same thing with taps. If 90% of your taps are going to be the shoe tap, put that in your routing preference. And what East Coast has done, we've added a couple other tools to the property palette that allow you to change those parts as your routing duct on the fly, so to speak. So as I have the duct command active, I can come down to my preferences here and you can see that currently my preference says to put in a square elbow but what if for this particular run I want to change that to my radius elbow my four inch pressure class so I can change that and you can see that it now went through and put in my four inch elbow and what if for my next run I want to put in an angle throat elbow so I choose it for the angle throat then I come through and you can see that, yes, indeed, it did put on the angle throw elbow. I'm just on the subject of elbows. Um, we get some support calls about this. I thought that I would mention it. So you notice that when I hit the plus grip and went back to my square elbow, I'm going to put that in there. But if you scroll in pretty far into the square elbow, you can see that it actually has a radius throat on it. If I select that elbow and go to my properties palette here, you can see that the throat radius is actually set to zero, but if I needed that to have a value in it, I can put a value in there. Then you can see that that elbow now has a radius in it. So it's kind of a dual elbow. It has dual purposes to it. Um, just make sure to pay attention to that. So you can change your elbow on the fly. In addition, you can change your taps on the fly. So if I choose the plus grip and I change to a smaller size, I come down here, you can see it also has all your taps that you have loaded into your catalog. So you're able to put a different tap in there on the fly at the same time. So a couple tools in there to save you some effort in going out and modifying your routing preferences. You can just choose the correct tool right from the property palette itself. Now, one of the last tools that I want to talk about is our Auto Connect tool. Um, our Auto Connect tool allows you to place a fitting between a duct to duct connection, a fitting to duct connection, or a fitting to fitting connection. So normally when you're routing duct, when you're changing sizes, so let's put in a uh, 36 by 36 duct here, and let's make our justification bottom center still. So if I'm routing along, and I need to change my size to 30 to 30, and I just want to have a straight, regular transition, I can do that right on the fly just by changing the size of my ductwork. And it's going to put in a transition there for me. So if we come over here and we look at this from a front elevation, we can see that it put in an, a, a flat on bottom transition, and everything looks good. If I change my justification as of my duct as I'm routing, so now I change this to top left, or you know what, let's keep it a bottom center. 
Let's route our duct to where we need to be. Now let's say we need to change our size. If I and I want that duct to be flat on top and flat on the left side, I can come in here in the middle of my command, change this to top left, go ahead and put in my new size, 20 by 20, and then continue routing, and here I'm going to go ahead and change back to bottom center, and finish my command, you can see that this is flat on left and flat on top. So very quickly we put in the correct transition that we wanted to insert into our drawing, just using the justification tools. Now if we want to put in a different type of fitting, say in a fitting where we actually have a exaggerated um, offset to either side and up or down above the outside edge of our first duct, then we have to do something else. We have to actually come in here and we would need to manually delete that. Then let's say that this duct here actually had to be six inches further to the left and it needs to be six inches further up. So I'm going to move this up six inches. We have a tool, if we select both of these pieces of duct, and notice that I'm selecting this, the smaller duct first, and I'm coming over here, and I'm selecting this larger duct, as airflow, if airflow was going from left to right, I am choosing the, what would be the outlet of the transition first, and then the inlet of the transition. But if you notice that when we select both of those pieces, we get a new tool up here on our duct objects tool tab. And this is what we call our auto connect tool. What it does, it allows me to connect two ducts, a duct or a fitting, or two fittings together, and choose the fitting that will go in between them. So in this case, it's coming up, and it's asking me if I want to put in a rectangular transition, a rectangular transition OG with a left or, or left or right offset, or a rectangular transition OG with an up or down offset. Well, if I choose just a rectangular one, and I, you get to choose your defaults, and you get to choose your pressure class, so I'm going to keep it the same pressure class, same default, I'm just going to hit it apply, it's going to go through and automatically put that transition in for you. Now one thing to notice with our version 6.1 software, that it put this transition in the correct orientation. So it matched this connector one up with this connector two, and over here this connector two with this connector one. So direction of flow, it should always be connector one to connector two. Prior to our version 6.1 software, it did not work this way. Whatever connector you selected first, that's where it put the connector one of the transition. That could cause some problems, especially with your tagging, because your transition would be rotated upside down, which could cause some of your tags to report incorrectly. Um, with 6.1, we've drastically reduced almost to zero the amount of times that that's going to happen. And to verify it, you can select your fitting, and you can just look up here on the ribbon tab, and you can see that this fitting is rotated zero degrees. That means it is correctly rotated in the correct direction. Um, not the correct direction, just the correct orientation that matches the direction of its surrounding pieces of duct. So that was the rectangular transition. I can remove that and choose my two pieces again. And This time I'm going to put in the OG left and right and hit apply. So now you can see we have the OG curve. Let's see, the best way to view this would probably be in the object viewer. So we have a transitioning up and down and left and right, but we have the OG in the left right. Nice smooth transition with our 6.1 software. If I delete that and do it one more time, 
except this time choose my OG up down and hit apply. You can see that again it put in a transition and from the top view it looks like a rectangular transition. If we look at that in our 3D view, we can see that it is in fact an OG transition and not a rectangular transition, which is exactly what we wanted. So depending on your situation, uh, there will be different fittings that are available. So if I move this back down six inches towards its exact same elevation as the duct it was connecting to, and I go ahead and change the height of this duct to 20 by 30. So it has the same height as the other duct. And uh, let's just see if it is um, lined up correctly. It's not, so I still need to move it down another six inches. Or I could take this grip and drag it to this one to make sure they are exactly in the same plane. Now if I select these two pieces of duct, I should have other options, and I do. I get a extra straight left and a Z left. So just depending on your, um, looks like it put in the transition there, depending on your duct sizes and your location of your duct sizes, it will give you the option to choose different fittings. So in this case, you can see it put in the extra straight. So that, just be aware of that. The Auto Connect tool also works with elbows. So if I came in here with this elbow, and this, I came through and I'm like, oh, you know what? This is not supposed to be a mitered elbow. It's supposed to be a radius elbow. The Auto Connect tool will allow you to change that. Now in this particular case, it's going to be a very small radius. In fact, it was so small, it wouldn't let me put it in there. But if I was to move this down, six inches then come back up here and choose my radius elbow you can see that I put one in there with the correct dimensions in order to fit that space very similar to the uh, using auto connect with the transition and you can also go through and put in your angled throat elbow and basically the same thing, you just now get your angled throat. So in the right situations, the Auto Connect tool can be very powerful um, if you need to change out your specification of your, of your um, elbow. You can change it out in the way that we just mentioned. Or you can come up and in addition to our Auto Connect tool, we have our Fabrication Modify tool. So if you see here, it's giving us our manufacturer defaults and it's giving us our pressure class. I can actually change my pressure class from four to two and hit apply and then select that elbow and you can see over here that it actually did change the pressure class from a four inch pressure class to a two inch pressure class. So when you need to change pressure class of an object, it's much better to change it using either uh, the fa uh, fabrication modify tool or when you need to change a lot of objects at the same time you can use our duct fabrication tool so if I need to change all of these to a two inch pressure class I can come up here to my duct fabrication tool and change everything to two inch and hit OK Then everything will get modified at once um, I will throw in there real quick that I believe that this is not a standard option and you do need to have an upgrade on your ASP key uh, to have this activated. Um, so that's our duct fabrication tool and as I mentioned when you need to change your specifications it's preferable that you use that tool or the drop down here. Our duct spec override tool should only really be used when you need to change you know just one item on your specification so let's say this was uh, a piece of duct that was just blowing into a um, an open space and you don't really need the flanges on here you can then come up and choose your duct spec override let's just say on connector 2 you just wanted a raw edge you would come in you choose your raw edge and hit OK you can see that that, that piece of duct now has a raw edge 
you never really should you, if you need to change this from a two inch to a four inch pressure class, you should never really come in here, come to your deck, duct spec override and say, okay, you know what, I want my gauge now to be 22, I want this to be a large pit. Um, you know, don't change your entire pressure class by using the duct spec override. It's dead. Use the tools provided to change it this way. Makes for a, a lot cleaner um, download to um, Duck Maker when you go to download. All right, let's go back to our slides. We talked about Auto Connect. Uh, appears on the ribbon when you select two duct objects. The correct fitting type will appear. It's useful for placing transitions and offsets. Duct select order is important. You know, I think I went over that really quick. I'll just iterate it one more time. <clears throat> the order that you select your fittings prior to version 6.1 had a lot of had a lot to do with the orientation of your transition. Um, it's really hard for me to demonstrate it because I am running version 6.1, but in version 6.0, since I selected this fitting first, my new transition would have connector 1 on this end and connector 2 on this end when flow was going this way. So it kind of put the transition in there backwards. We've made a lot of uh, improvements to that in version 6.1, as I mentioned, and you can see that it will actually flip the transition around for you and put it in the correct order. So as soon as you can update to the newest release, uh, it certainly is a bonus in that aspect. So that's uh, all that I really wanted to get through today on rounding duck. We have one question here. How do I set up the split screen? Actually setting up the split screen is fairly easy. Down in the command line, if I just type in viewports, it'll bring up this dialog and it'll allow you to set the viewports the way that you want. So two vertical is what I normally do. I see a lot of people sometimes do um, three horizontal or three right, three left. And then maybe they'll have this one as their top. This one they'll have as an isometric. And this one they'll have as an elevation view. All right, so that's it for today. I thank everyone for coming. And uh, we'll meet again in two weeks where we will go over our auto tagging.